only mode. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll. Alderman Tobin. Here. Alderman Jean Francois. Here. Alderman Johnson. Here. Alderman Ram Kassoon. Here. Alderman Kleiner. Here. Alderman Green. Here. Alderman Witt. Here. Alderman Massey. Here. President Rodriguez. Here. Quorum is present. Approval of minutes. We have the minutes from February 15th, 2022 and March 1st, 2022. So moved. Motion by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Green. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, correspondence. A report from Agriculture and Markets on the Municipal Shelter Report Inspection Report from March 10th. Received and filed. And a standard notice of fo form providing a third day advance notice to a local municipality or community board for a liquor license. Received and filed. For the good of the city, I would like to call the mayor up for a special presentation. Good evening, everyone. We're honored this evening. Um, we have a full house, and we have a full house for um, a very great reason. Of, for our community. First, I'd like to welcome our superintendent, uh, Amy Creedon, um, and uh, Bishop, um, Bishop Williams from the Middletown School Board, the president of the Middletown School Board, along with the other members, Mr. Perino, Mr. Biasen, and I'm not sure if I missed anyone else, um, who are members of the Middletown School Board here, along with the parents and a group from the Presidential Park School. If you're not familiar with it, and you should be, um, a short while ago, we welcomed back to Middletown a group of young ladies from a competition for the New York State Odyssey of the Minds. And not just uh, that they participate in the competition, but they are the New York State champs. So we wanted to acknowledge. So we have a little recognition certificates and other uh, gifts for them to be acknowledged tonight. But before they, we do that, I'd like to just have them all stand one by one at their seats as I call their name. Uh, Elena Newsom. <laughs> Heather Checo. <laughs> Zoe Lala. Juliana Galdamez. I apologize if I didn't say that right. But Camelia Chalito. The next one I better get right because our mother works for us. Alexa Acasio. And last but not least, Julia Grogan. Now I would like to invite up Julie Nolan, who is the head of this beautiful team. And she'll introduce her, um, her team of people that worked on it and also explain to everyone and people watching on our um, access channel what Odyssey of the Mind is. So go ahead, Julie. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks. Hi, I'm Julie Nolan. This is my partner, Mel, Mel Silva. Silva. We've been doing this together um, for a couple of years now, about six or seven years. I actually started with Mr. Witt's wife when the program just came back to Middletown. And I just want to explain what the program is. It's a creative problem solving. The girls get a problem that's five pages long, and they have to solve it in an eight-minute skit. And in that problem, there are lines and lines and lines of things they have to do. It took seven months, and you can't spend money. Just under, though this year it went up, it was $125. So we recycle everything and build beautiful sets out of it. We're garbage pickers. Yes, we made our kids. <laughs> I said recycle. It sounds a little nicer. Um, this year was very special, first of all, because we won first place, which is huge. And we also won a Renatra Fusco Award, which is the highest award you can win in Odyssey of the Mind for being creative, which was huge. And now we're on to Worlds. And it's also very unique because this year they had to create a musical over, basically think of like Hamilton, somebody who was famous but not really famous and should be remembered better. 
and they chose um, someone right here from Middletown. Lydia Sayer Hasbrook. I don't know if anybody knows, but after you see their performance and if you want to talk to them, you're going to know all about her. And she was, <laughs> yes, that's what, how it all started. Okay. It started Good. with the pick, the historical that? sign, and we made that as one of our props. Good. Good. Yeah, so you'll see that. You're going to play the, so you'll yes, see we are. it, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, if you want to, after you see it and talk to the girls and see how they found out about her and, you know, she might need a bigger plaque here in City yeah. Hall now <laughs> that she's better remembered. All right, thank you. Great. Thank Enjoy. you. Thank you. And now we're going to have a little video. Uh, we were hoping that they would perform, but the props and transferring everything was uh, just too much. So they are providing us with the video. Eileen, you want to start it up? It's about seven, eight minutes long. So enjoy the tape. We might have to put that on Broadway. That'd be a nice story to tell. <laughs> There's a lot of talent there. I'd also like to uh, bring up the uh, school superintendent, our new superintendent, Amy Creedon, and I'm sure she has a few nice words to say about her proud moments here. So. Thank you, Common Council, President Rodriguez and Mayor DiStefano. Really exciting um, night for um, our community and the district. This is certainly something that's shared by all of us. Um, not only did this all-female team win, but they won in Women's History Month. And so what we've been saying in school is that we don't want to talk necessarily just about women's history, but we want to talk about women right now and what they're doing. And um, so it's really exciting for them. And also just to note that each year that the Odyssey the Mind has the competition, um, it is up to the judges to decide if a team receives um, the Fusco Award. And they don't give it out every year. And um, they only give it out to teams who demonstrate just overall incredible awesomeness, outstanding performance. And so that's something to note that all of the judges, in addition to the team winning, have to then make a determination and come to a unanimous agreement about a team if they're going to um, acknowledge a team with this award. So um, truly something spectacular for this team. And when we had an opportunity to receive some feedback from some of the judges, um, they said that it wasn't even close. This team blew them away and is certainly a team to watch when they head to Iowa. So thank you very much for honoring them tonight. <laughs> And you've already accomplished something because we're going to fix that sign, that marker, too, because I think it's a little faded. So, so what we're going to do next is we're going to have um, you come up. We're going to present you with our certificates, and we have a little gift for you to take home with you. So, uh, we're going to call you up one by one, okay? Julia Grogan. Alexa Ocasio. Amelia Chilito. <laughs> Juliana Goldemnez. Zoe Lala. <laughs> Heather Checo. <laughs> Alina Newsom.
You guys all want to get behind us? You guys yeah, picture? Yeah. Amy, want to come up there? Julie and Amy, want to come up for a picture? And, um, I forgot. Okay. You guys stand up right in front of us. Okay, we'll all stand behind you. <laughs> Amy, coming up? Now, in those boxes was the key to the city. It doesn't work really for the front door of City Hall, but it is the key to the city. So thank you all. I want to take a couple minute break, and then we can find out a little bit more about Lydia. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone I'd like to address the council, please step forward. Good evening, Susan DePew from Middletown Pride Cleanup Committee. I just would like to ask the aldermen to do a favor for the group that, that's trying to gather information. Would you please give us the streets and the community areas that need to be um, really cleaned up in your wards so, so that it makes the difference? We have so many people who are interested in helping to make Middletown better. and. That is a great example of Middletown being at the premium spot that it can be. Seeing kids like that, it just brings, brings me to being a great grandma. I just, anyway, so I'm asking you please to just go through the streets that um, are bothersome in your wards and let me know and let Rich know. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Eileen, we have somebody online. Yes, we do. I have Juan. You're unmuted on our end. Feel free to go ahead. You have three minutes. Hello, uh, my name is Juan Ayala. Um, and before I start, I want to quickly set out my congratulations to Alderman Sparrow and Alderman Jean John Francois on their reelection. Uh, anyway, I want to address the council on an issue concerning the Heritage Trail that's coming cutting through the city of Middletown. Um, personally, I can't wait for it. I think this is an awesome idea. And, but as you know, I was a candidate for Alderman in the last election cycle. And then I went around knocking on doors of our wonderful neighbors and several safety and private issues have been brought to my attention. One of the residents actually invited me over to her home to witness how close the trail is to her backyard. Now she stated to me that she's reached out to the city of Middletown in the county. The county responded back to her um, it's a long letter. Um, she so didn't take it really positively, but I did see it with my own eyes how close this trail runs for her property. Now, for most of the city, I, I'm aware because it's, it used to be a railroad trail that there's quite a bit of space, but where she is, she's literally two feet away from the trail. The trail also sits about three feet above her backyard, so she absolutely has no privacy. And she was sort of hoping that either the city or the county was sort of step up and provide like a uh, privacy fence. And apparently, as I said before, the city of Middletown didn't respond back to her, but the county did. Um, and I'm going to quickly pull up the letter here. But basically, hold on a second. The county re replied, suggested that they that she plant either an evergreen trees along her property, which and or the city of Utah might be able to do it for her or get a privacy fence on her property. But to be honest, she would need to get something like 12 feet to have any kind of, uh, of, of privacy. So I, I will post these photos on my Facebook page at wantforfreedom.com, but that's the number four. And so you can see it for yourself. But um, 
that's one particular issue that was brought to my attention. And I, I totally agree with her. I mean, I, I, I can't wait for the trail to come through, but if I was living there, I would be very upset about what's going to happen. And I don't understand why the county can't put up a, a six foot privacy fence on, dirt, on the trail. It would probably be much cheaper than trying to plant several trees on her property. The other issue brought to my attention that uh, I just brought by two other residents. Um, also, they just want to know if the city of Milltown is going to provide any kind of control on the trail or any security cameras because, you know, like, again, I didn't think about this, but I would be a little concerned if I had strangers, hundreds of strangers passing from my backyard. And, you know, and so those are those things I wanted to address to the council. I hope um, they to they address it. I know the mayor's a big fan of quality of life issues and um, that's all I have for today. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right. Remarks of the mayor. Uh-oh. I'm glad the candidate for office this past November has decided to share with, with us recently uh, this. Uh, this trail has been in the works for 21 years, and every person who has brought a, um, an issue to the city has been addressed, including uh, some privacy issues. I don't know who the person is because he didn't identify them, but I believe that he probably should convey to them that the appropriate people to contact would be the city officials. Um, I don't know if they contacted Sparrow or or Jude, they're both shaking their head no. I know they didn't contact my office. Um, I don't know why they would contact the losing candidate in a race rather than the winning candidates in a race. But um, we certainly will have a uh, uh, entertain their phone call and, and meet with them and, and address it like we've addressed other issues along the trail. As for the security issue, it's kind of insulting for a candidate for office to raise a concern on a 30-mile trail that because it's coming in the middle of town, all of a sudden we need security of, of some type along the trail, um, security uh, devices, but um, I'll just ignore that part for now. But uh, we certainly would be willing to examine the options for um, privacy um, along, I'm assuming it's along Sprague Avenue because that's where some of the other people have raised the issue. And uh, we'll, we'll look at it when the homeowner calls us, uh, but I'm not gonna respond to um, uh, uh, look on Mr. Ayala's Freedom website and probably see a picture of Donald Trump on there, and then I don't want to see that either. So, um, so I'll move on to the next issues, which was the event that we had tonight. It was fantastic. The kids are um, just so happy. I was fortunate to be there when the uh, I took my grandson and my daughter was there for the bus trip back, and um, you can just see the pride. Of the and Kevin Kevin was there also. I think Andrew might have been there. I'm not sure. But, um, but the, this is what we're selling here in Middletown. It's, you know, the school district, um, the, the community, the community events, the trails, the recreation, the downtown. Um, that's all what we're selling, quality of life. And we certainly want to address the quality of life for any person who has a concern, especially if it's a legitimate concern. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that. On, on the other side, we, um, you've seen a lot of activity downtown with construction. Uh, they're doing the saw cuts for the balance of the uh, curbs and sidewalk program, but this is not just downtown. This will be almost every traffic, every signalized intersection in the city. We'll be getting the sidewalk work, new pedestrian crossings, ADA compliant crossings, at least 250 feet from each intersection of sidewalk and some areas more um, because we're connecting um, the gaps, you know, if we're doing a traffic light and they're 500 feet or 1,000 feet apart and we're doing 250 feet on each way, then we're filling in the other 500 feet between it. The total project is $26 million. The minimum funding will be 80%. The maximum funding will be 95. We're very hopeful it's going to be the 95. But uh, in previous, we've, um, you know, you've appropriated the money um, and we're hoping that we don't hit any, any problems. But um, this is going to be a massive project. It's going to be realigning some streets, the corner of uh, Canal and James, where we tore down the building, is being um, realigned. The intersection at Wickham and Highland is going to be realigned with, I believe, a turning lane. Um, the light at Lake, for example, will have a turning arrow, so you're not backed up to um, uh, down to Monhagen Avenue on certain times of the day when someone wants to make a left turn onto Lake. So um, all those things are in, being taken into consideration. 
Um, Jacob is in charge of the project, and we're um, uh, hoping, uh, hoping for a successful project. The schedule is up on our website. It's been on Facebook. We've shared it with our business community. Um, there will be some inconvenience in the areas that um, uh, when construction is underway, but the contractor will have to put you know, steel plates over your driveway, or if it's a business, they'll have to do that. So if anyone's having any problems or complications with the contractor and with the work, you should call the Department of Public Works, and we will address it immediately. Don't call Mr. Ayala. Call the Department of Public Works. <laughs> so the, um, the other um, issue that, um, well, I, I can wait for the next meeting. I, I know we've been here a while, and we have something to go, but um, I just wanted to... Uh, address those points tonight and let people know that construction is happening and uh, there is a resolution tonight uh, for a funding of using 50,000 the ARPA funding for planning for um, that money will be applied to some infill planning and possibly psychiatric center planning um, Dropkin strategies is um, uh, John we're all familiar with him from pattern for progress he retired from that and has started his own consulting firm and um, we met with him today, Maria and myself. Um, we had a nice tour of what we're hoping that he will be able to work on for us. And I think it'll be very beneficial for the city as we move forward in the next year or two. So if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to address them either tonight or you know, at, at a future date. So thank you so much. Any questions for the mayor? Thank you, mayor. Remarks of the department head, economic development. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, just, uh, just to update you that we're moving forward with uh, our uh, summer concert series events and uh, the Paramount has been uh, hosting concerts. We have one this Saturday, uh, April 9th, the Association. Hope to see uh, folks come out for that. And as, as I'm speaking about events, the Run for Downtown also is coming back full force this year. And uh, we're looking for your support tonight. As you know, the city hosts, along with the Business Improvement District, uh, with the Run for Downtown Committee, hosts the annual run. And uh, they contributed $60,000 towards that pavilion on Airyway Park. Um, and overall, over 120, around 120000 uh, since the inception of the race to, towards the downtown and downtown projects. So. Um, we are going to be doing a kickoff event, um, and we're looking for your support tonight on the resolution. And the kickoff event is to thank uh, the contributors because there are also major sponsors that have been involved in this um, in this run. And uh, looking forward to that. And um, that's all I have for tonight. If anyone has any questions, any question for Maria. Alderman Kleiner. Thank you. I, I saw that the Paramount postponed or canceled the movies this past weekend, as it said for technical difficulties. Has that been resolved? It, it's being resolved. It's a uh, projector issue that we have to send bo back the um, member. There's a board in the projector, and we have to send it back, and it's got to get fixed. And and uh, hopefully it will be resolved this week or early next week. So. Okay, I know. I know it's you had a Thursday movie scheduled. Is that off the schedule now too? We're gonna see if we can uh, reshow. Oh, for this Thursday? Yeah. I believe it. Yeah, we won't be able to uh, pull it off for this Thursday. But if uh, by any chance uh, we'll be uh, posting and updating if we do. But it is, you know, we have one one projector. We're not six screens, so. These things happen, and uh, like I said, uh, we're, the board is getting mailed uh, to the company. They're going to fix it, and send it back, and then we'll be we'll be back to the movie soon. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Maria. DPW Commissioner. Good afternoon. Uh, I had a special request to move fast. So I'll move fast tonight because <laughs> from all the room in Ramka soon. So, because so <laughs> she's tired, she's been watching the games and so on. Reservoirs, Alderman Massey, full 100%. We're happy about that. Um, the flushing for our water distribution system, we have completed the second and third ward, 
And now we're going to be starting on Monday, the first and fourth wards. So please be on the lookout for, uh, for uh, discolored water. Second and third ward, they can start using the water comfortably because any discolored water would have passed by now. It will take us uh, three weeks, hopefully less, to finish the first and fourth ward for water system flushing. Um, tomorrow, we'll be, again, we're meeting with DOT and the contractor for the water line on uh, Manhagen Avenue, Route 211, in there to scope out the extent of uh, paving and milling on 211, so to, and hopefully getting the contractor back to work to finish the project because we do have some issues there. So hopefully we can ha resolve some of them at least tomorrow. Um, traffic operation, the mayor, he spoke uh, about it in great details. Uh, please be careful when you uh, walk by the workers. Uh, they're working for us, so you know we want them to go home safely. Be patient. Find alternate routes if you have to, if you're not comfortable with the one lane traffic. Uh, but we, we expect to keep the traffic moving. Just be patient, please, and look out for the safety of the workers that they are doing this work for us and they want to go home safely to their families that they're doing the work for to support them. Um, <clears throat> the uh, Wall Slayer Field, um, uh, Parks and Recs and the Water Department, they've been doing the excavation for the electrician to do all the electric work in there and the lighting. And that is almost completed. We also installed uh, today the water line uh, to supply the future concession stand and the irrigation system. There's going to be some portable irrigation system that will be used. After that, the contractor will come back and finish the final coat on top of the track. And that will be the end of the project. So I think it's a, it's a nice, uh, successful project. Um, <clears throat> Um, you, you, uh, we've been talking for a couple of years about the zombie uh, poles and the double poles and all that stuff. Uh, we have 60 of them that they have to be removed totally because of the traffic operation studies and uh, traffic operation project. And, uh, and uh, really, it's, it's, uh, uh, they're an eyesore and some of them, I don't know how safe they are, but uh, make a long story short, Brian Smith, our deputy commissioner, he's really been working hard on this, coordinating this effort with Frontier and with Spectrum and all the internet providers, the fiber optic providers, there are three of them in the city. And uh, Orange and Rockland really is out of it because they moved right away. What remains is Spect Spectrum and Frontier. And now they have two teams in there working it's gonna, they're going to be working nonstop to try to eliminate all the double poles in the city, starting with the 60 poles that are required for the traffic operations and the signalized intersection. So I just want to call out Brian because he, did, he really took special interest in this and kept pursuing it. And I want to thank Frontier, Spectrum, and all the other companies for cooperating with us and really making this eyesore uh, disappear hopefully very soon. Um, yard waste officially started yesterday. Uh, remember, please go to our website. No leaves to be pushed on the street or in the gutter. Uh, everything has to be canned in a container so we can come and pick it up. Uh, no loose uh, branches. It's got to be cut certain length. It's going to be bound with the string. So look at our website, DPW at the City of Middletown website, and you'll find the exact uh, specifications for it. Uh, reminder, um, also the spring cleanup is going to be starting on uh, April 25th. It's going to be the second ward. May, May 2nd will be uh, the uh, first ward. May 9th, fourth ward. And May 16th is the third ward. That starts on Monday. Make sure everything is out, please, by Sunday. Do not put it out too early. We, uh, our code enforcement has been going around the city in there sending people friendly reminders, if possible, otherwise issuing a violation for people to take their junk back in until the time for the reward to be put out. Otherwise, the city will look like a landfill. So please help us out, keep our city clean, and hopefully we'll have no names to be submitted for Miss Sue Depew for cleanup. If everybody cleans up after themselves in, in their front yard and the streets, leave them to us. We will clean them. We have the sweepers going on nonstop, basically. Um, also be on the lookout, please, for illegal dumping, meaning people coming from the outside to dump their junk and uh, whatever they have into our streets in front of your house at night. 
please call the police department immediately at night. You can take a picture. We will not share your information. It will be uh, confidential. We just want to catch these people and discourage them from coming because it costs us a lot of money to get rid of all this junk and, uh, and picking it up and uh, trucking it all the way to Pennsylvania and so, uh, landfill in Pennsylvania. So please be uh, vigilant and take pictures, report it during the day to DPW and the police department after hours to the police department. Let's keep our city clean and let's uh, do this uh, operation economically. And with that, I, I will conclude for now. If you have any questions for me. Alderman Green. Hey, real quick, and the mayor may have covered this, um, so I apologize if I'm doubling up, but I did have someone ask me, um, with the traffic operations, I know originally there was a plan across from the um, uh, the armory to cut out that little pass-through section where you have Liberty Street and, and Wickham. Yes. Is that still something that's yes. going to happen? Yes. Okay. That, that, right. that shortcut in there, the dangerous shortcut, yeah, the that's... extension of Liberty Street is going to be eliminated. It's going to be parked. It's going to be a park area in there, just an extension of it. And from Highland, you'll be able to turn left on, on Wickham Avenue with the traffic lights uh, and everything. And WSP, they had a, they were flying a drone today. Uh, WSP is the engineering firm that designed the project so that they can uh, show pictures before and after mm -hmm. with the drone. So, so we're, we're all very excited. It's going to be state-of-the-art technology for all this signalize intersections they're going to be synchronized they're going to be coordinated it's going to take some you know we're going to have to work at it at the beginning but eventually it will work awesome thank you yes sir anyone else alderman tobin uh commissioner could you just share what, uh, what you share with us about uh armchair and uh, the draining of the or the what you guys did uh cutting down the vegetation the plan to go back yes uh, so so basically for the folks uh, up there some people were complaining about Amsher's, uh, and the fourth word is not, uh, well, not some people, one person, is, is, not, uh, is not being paid attention to by the city of Middletown and, and, and so on, which is uh, far, far, far from the truth. Uh, most of Amsher village has just been recently milled and repaved, as an example. I'll get to the drainage. The, um, we, ha we have put sidewalks that they never had sidewalks in, in certain locations such as on Dolson Avenue in there to encourage walkers, business, encourage to promoting life really for walkers and then and getting life into that section of the city. So we've been paying more that more attention than anything. The roundabout in there, you know, $2 million investment in the roundabout and then uh, paving and James P. Kelly way and, and all these stuff. So we've been paying as much attention as, as we pay to the rest of the city. They have not been ignored. They've been some would argue that they have been favored somewhat, but they needed that. So regarding the drainage, uh, we have already went there and we cut out all the growth as much as we can reach right now because it's a wet season. We've done like that like a month ago. I know you got the complaints after we already cut it out. There is still some sections remaining in there, but it's too wet. We have to drive over the railroad track to get to it. That railroad track is not dead. It, can, it, it is used. It's owned by a company. We can't get on it without permission from them. City took ownership, not ownership. City, city started maintaining those ditches along the railroad tracks. Those ditches, they drained the entire Amsher village right into them. That's where the, all the drainage, all the runoff, it ends up on those ditches along the railroad, tra railroad track. So we have been maintaining it. Now, once it dries up in the summer, we will go in there with our big machines and we will literally dredge those ditches around the railroad tracks as much as possible and remove the vegetation entirely. Alderman Spiro and I, and uh, Alderman uh, Jude and I, we went there, we checked all the culverts after you got that complaint because we usually drive around because he's the DPW chairman for, for, uh, for uh, the council. So we drive around different projects, him and I. So we stopped in there, let's say, well, let's go see it. And all the culverts, none of them were plugged. Water was running, you know, and, and uh, there is standing water. There's always been standing water, except if there's a drought condition. Water, I mean, standing, but still moving. It's not just sitting there. But that's, that's how it is. We have not ignored it. We took it over. It should be the, the responsibility of the railroad. We tried that for years. They would not maintain it, so we took it over. We're maintaining it by, by directions from the mayor, and, and, um, and, and that's where we are. We're not ignoring it. Yep. Anyone else? Thank you for being quick. Yes, sir. <laughs>
fire chief. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, first, I want to congratulate the kids for the Odyssey of Mine. That was that's very great um, that they did that. But for the month month of March, we did 84 calls. Right now, we're on schedule to run about a thousand calls for the year if it keeps up. Um, we did participate in the Little League Parade, and we also participated. We sent fire trucks up for Odyssey of the Mine when they came back, so that was nice. Maria brought up Run for Downtown. This year, Run for Downtown and the Fire Department are teaming up. Um, we're teaming up to save Fireman Joe downtown, which is leaning, getting ready to fall over. And uh, I'm working with Jacob to get the bids out in the paper so people can bid it and uh, hopefully get it done this year. But like Maria said, August 20th, run for downtown. The fire department, we are having our, putting together a first responder challenge for this run for downtown. If you didn't know, Middletown, Middletown were the champions last year because we competed against ourselves. So we won. <laughs> um, but this year we're offering it up to 52 other departments um, in Orange County. And hopefully, uh, once the word gets out, all the flyers get out, we get 52 responses back from other departments to take us on. We do hold the, the trophy. How many on the team? As many as you want to bring. So I figure you, the mayor, and Miguel. That's, that's what we were thinking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but other than that, that's all I have for tonight. Anything else? Any questions for the fire chief? Thanks, you, Chief. Thanks. City Treasurer. <clears throat> Youth Quick. Good evening, everybody. Um, there is a resolution tonight uh, requesting authorization for the refunding of some bonds, and Alderman Witt wanted me to speak a little bit about it. Um, basically, the city contracts with a company called Capital Market Advisors, and they actually look out for savings for the city. They look at the interest rates. Um, basically, it's like refinancing your mortgage. So it was a 30-year bond issuance, and at this point in time, you know, with the cost of the their fees and the legal fees, they felt it was worth it for us to refinance the bonds. Um, in cash value, it's going to save us $325,000 over the next couple of years. They do a whole net present value thing, and they're saying it's about two fifty six. dollars But, you know, they tell us this is a really good thing to do right now. No problem. Any other questions? Any questions for Kelly? Thank you, Kelly. No problem. Police Chief. Good evening. Just a couple of things this evening. Uh, First, this past Wednesday, one of my staff, a longtime member of the police department, uh, Detective Sergeant Jason Jennings, retired. I just want to wish him well and acknowledge his achievements with the department. He will definitely be missed, and I wish him well as he enters into the next chapter of his life's journey. Uh, additionally, last week, we had the first graduation of our Youth Leadership uh, Academy. We had 18 participants, um, very successful program, and I'd like to thank uh, Sergeant Welch, who ran it, did an amazing job, and all of the support from our you know, elected officials and our community members that uh, made that all happen. So thank you for that. Other than that, I have nothing unless you have questions for me. Any questions for the police chief? All the Kleiner. Hi, Chief. Uh, one, one quick question. We, we have a resolution. I see a lot of material supporting it for the sim, buying the simulator. Yes. Um, I, my question is, what is a simulator? Okay, so the simulator, <laughs> it's a driving simulator that will be housed at the police academy, which is on the Parks and Rec property of the County Route 78. And it is a, a, an electronic driving uh, instrument that we can put police officers into a controlled environment where they will drive uh, through EVAC courses, emergency vehicle operation courses in that controlled environment. It's computer animated, automated, um, and it's really state of the art. Um, it's a lot safer and we could put them through a lot more challenges and tests. Very good, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Chief. Recreation, I know you're here. I'm trying to hide in the back. I'm trying. Good evening, everyone. Um, spring is upon us, trying to be here. Um, our maintenance department is very busy right now. Uh, Little League fields, um, getting our reservoir trails back in shape um, and working on the Wool Slayer uh, field project as well. Um, 
once in a while we always hear there's nothing for the youth to do in Middletown and there's only we only offer free pro, um, paid programming um, but just want to make it known that we all do offer a lot of free programming for the kids um, and this uh, Sunday April 10th at 1 p.m. we're even starting to bring go into neighborhoods so we're offering this Sunday in Summit Field uh, Housing Authority we're doing a free Zumba class for all families all levels all ages um, and we're going to be rotating uh, once a month trying to hit different neighborhoods doing uh, family Zumba classes um, we also have our Easter egg hunt on Saturday April 16th at our facility we have story time come alive for toddlers uh, we also have youth fitness and basketball open gym and we have teen boxing on friday nights and teen basketball open gym and again those are all free programming for our community um, paid programs for the spring we have our spring break program coming up april 11th through the 15th we have the let's play gym time for toddlers uh, lacrosse clinics martial arts break dancing adult youth and teen art classes, soccer clinics, foundations of dance, cheerleading clinic, uh, cooking classes, kitchen for kids, and a crocheting clinic for all ages. Um, so we're always busy and I'm sure like a lot of you, you hate when someone says there's nothing to do in Middletown. There is, you just have to look. Um, transportation, I mentioned it last meeting. Uh, we did start it the first two weeks. Unfortunately, we didn't have anyone take it but numbers are starting to pick up now. So it is successful for Wednesday nights. Um, we had about 10 kids uh, use the transportation um, and even more kids when they got their ride to the facility, they got on the bus to get home. Uh, so it is working. Um, summer sports camp, we have the permits into Manhagen. We're just waiting for final approval uh, from the school district. They have a lot of programming uh, going on this summer. So they're trying to get their, themselves situated and then hopefully very soon we'll hear back um, and get final confirmation to be in one of the schools to have our summer sports camp. Any questions? Any questions? All right, thank you, great job. Corporation Council. <laughs> Evening, I don't have anything unless anybody has any questions for me. Question for the Corporation Council. Thank you. City Clerk. Uh, just a reminder, we have our citywide pride cleanup taking place on April 23rd. Uh, you can sign up online through the city's website, www.middletown-ny.com. We're using Sign Up Genius. Uh, there's a whole list of streets and areas that need to uh, have some attention paid to them. And if there's anything missing, uh, feel free to email me or get a hold of us at the city clerk's office and we'll add them to the list as well. Okay, any questions? All right, public hearings and grievances. <clears throat> Notice is hereby given that the city of Middletown will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, April 5th, 2022, on or as near to 7.30 p.m. as possible in the Common Council Chamber, second floor, 16 James Street at 7.30, to hear any and all persons wishing to be heard on the recently passed local law number three of 2022, a local law updating the notice provisions in the enforcement of delinquent property taxes. Full text of the law, local law number three of 2022 is available in the office of the Common Council Clerk, City Hall, 16 James Street, room number 12, and on the city website. Okay, at this time the public hearing is open. Anyone from the public would like to speak? Anyone online? Not at this time. Okay, any council member? Do I have a motion to close? So moved. Alderman Massey, seconded by. Alderman Witt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Marks of Alderman, Alderman Massey. <laughs> you have another one? Yeah, the second First one. thing I'd like to do wait, is. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta go back to the public hearing. I took okay. a second one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Notice is hereby given that the city of Middletown will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, April 5th, 2022, on or as near to 7.30 p.m. as possible in the Common Council Chambers, second floor, 16 James Street, to hear any and all persons wishing to be heard on a proposed change to the definition of retail business in the DMU downtown mixed-use district to exclude on-site consumables. Any person or persons wishing to be heard will be given an opportunity to speak either for or against the proposed change in the definition of retail business. The complete proposed change is available in the office of the Common Council Clerk, City Hall, 16 James Street, Room 12, and on the city website. All right, this time the public hearing is now open. Again, anyone from the public? 
and any council member. Alder Tobin. Well, the, the issue is, is that we, we've gotten word that some retail stores are, in effect, morphing into eating and drinking places where people are hanging out, um, eating or drinking what they what they buy at retail, and uh, uh, we could bring violations against the owner because the owner got permission or was in a zoning district where he could operate a retail store, he or she, and um, they're in effect violating their permit or violating the zoning district by becoming an eating and drinking establishment. Uh, instead of doing that, I think we felt that the smarter thing to do would be to make it clear up front that if you apply to become a retail store or you have permission from the um, zoning district to be a retail store, that you're going to sell at retail. You're not going to be selling to people who are then going to be eating and drinking at your place. If, if you want that, you have to apply to the planning board for permission to do that so the planning board can examine your premises and see that everything um, fits into you know, running an eating and drinking establishment and set rules. Anyone else? <clears throat> I got a motion to close. So moved. Massey, seconded by Alderman Witt. And it's roll. I mean, all in favor. Aye. <clears throat> now remarks of Alderman. Alderman Massey. All right. I'd like to open up with uh, once again congratulating the uh, young ladies from Presidential Park Odyssey of the Mind Team. You watch the news enough and you see so many negative things about the youth and then unfortunately you don't see more of this and this, it's a wonderful thing and I'm very proud of them, very proud of the school system and this was very nice. Two, Sue, thank you very much uh, for the cleanup. I do have some streets in the first ward. I'm sure Kevin will have some other streets. I'll, I'll give him the Rick. And then my last thing quickly, it's just an advertisement. Uh, unfortunately, the, because of the weather, the first of this year Kiwanis Pancake Breakfast was canceled. It's rescheduled for this Saturday this Saturday at the high school, excuse me, April 9th. If you need tickets, I happen to have them. If not, tickets are available at the at the door. If you've already got them, obviously, they're good for the 9th. Thank you very much. Okay, Alderman Witt. Thank you very much. Um, quickly, we have uh, we're, we're going to have our first first ward meeting on April 13th from 6 to 7 here. Um, we hope you can make it. And the second part is just to sort of expand on the greatness of tonight with these girls in this performance. What we saw tonight was actually taped before they did their regional competition and because they did not allow spectators at that time. And so they went out and did that performance at Goshen and won the regional competition to qualify for states. I happened to speak with the uh, director of that for something else and the way that works is they have an elementary level a middle school level and a high school level and she told me that that performance that those girls put on was the best that they had seen at any level in years so it was amazing how and, and they wrote all of that they built the sets they did the music I mean obviously they borrowed some stuff but it was they they did all of that so then they take it on the road up to, to Albany and they went up against 15 teams and the way this works is this is a two-part deal actually the first is that performance which they did very well and won that performance with that performance but there's also a part of this called spontaneous where they have five of the seven are taken into a room and given a, an open-ended question where they have to within a certain time frame give answers that would be logically that could fill into these, these, uh, the, the fill in the blank for, for what it's worth. And they also, you have like about two or three minutes to do this and they're judged by how many make sense and how many don't and on their creativity. They also won that two out of 15 teams. So it's, it's unheard of how at, for this competition, like how much this team dominated. 
and it was great to see probably 200 people, including the mayor, who were there for the, the welcome home. And, and as, as Chief Barber said, it was nice to have the police there and, and, the, and the fire trucks. So um, thank you for listening to that story. Alderman Green. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was a, a fantastic couple of weeks, I guess, for the, the youth in the city. Um, I'm always proud of them. You know, of course, the Odyssey of the Mind team, uh, the Police Youth Leadership Academy. It was phenomenal to, to really see um, those 18, I believe it was 18, uh, yeah, uh, young adults uh, all come together, all different walks of life, it seemed, all different backgrounds, uh, and just the, the transformation on, and the learning back and forth between the police department and the youth. That was amazing. Um, Little League Parade was uh, wonderful, a little bit chilly. Um, Mayor and I were, were up there walking. I know Coach Kate was out with, with her team, and then uh, you know we all, we all joined together uh, on the stage where it was like a wind tunnel, but uh, it was amazing to see you know all of the teams out there. Um, they put a lot of heart and work and soul into their, uh, their banners and, and to get out there and really show you know how proud they were. Uh, to be playing their, their different levels and uh, what, a, what a fantastic job. So uh, thank you to everyone who put that together. Um, we will be having our constituents meeting um, in this room on Monday the 11th at 7 p.m. Uh, the mayor will be joining us and uh, I did find out, thanks to Alderman Kleiner, we will have uh, COVID testing kits available um, in case uh, anyone does need them. Um, so again, that'll be here Monday the 11th at 7 p.m. Uh, and just to follow up, I am excited to hear that there will be an arrow at that left on the Lake Avenue because uh, sometimes people get a little impatient and I get honked at a lot because I do take that left. So thank you very much. Alderman Kleiner. Uh, thank you. I'm going to speak first as president of the uh, Middletown Historical Society. Uh, I want to thank the Odyssey kids. Uh, what a great job on Lydia Sayer Hasbrook. Um, of course, her husband, John Hasbrook, was, uh, did the first Middletown City Directory and uh, the, was editor and publisher of the Whig Press uh, throughout the Civil War. And then what a great team they were. And she would write letters surreptitiously to the paper. Um, she, she's, we will hopefully get the, uh, get the historic marker uh, restored so it's a little easier to read. but. Um, she's, she's somebody you should know about, and uh, I congratulate the kids for taking her story and, and really running with it. Um, the Little League Parade, I, I want to, um, I, I made a little uh, shout out for the uh, Asylum Nine, which was Middletown's first baseball team, the Septa State Hospital, and uh, baseball's been a big deal in Middletown ever since. And remembering Thomas Watts, who donated the land for Watts Park. I mean, people in Middletown have always stepped up. Uh, the parade was terrific this year. The kids, uh, the banners were great. And everyone was so enthusiastic. Uh, so I thank the, the coaches and the sponsors. But I also want to recognize um, Darren and Rosanna because they, as they mentioned, they didn't miss a little league season, even through the pandemic. They managed by hook or by crook to make it work. And I remind people that in 1952, half the season was canceled, including the playoffs because of the polio pandemic. So uh, it's, it's uh, quite an accomplishment and I give them credit for it. Um, Next, before we meet again, we will, uh, we will have Easter Sunday. I wish everyone a happy Easter. We will have Passover. <laughs> I wish everyone a, a happy Passover. Um, I, I just want to mention that we are up to 982,000 deaths in this country. At the last meeting, we were 900 and I believe 900 and 65, so we're, you know, 17, 18,000 more people since then. So it's, it's still a real issue and we do take it seriously. Um, I want to thank uh, uh, Rick for his uh, support of our, uh, this will be his first one, but our Pride Cleanup Day, he has, he has taken it and run with it. 
and the uh, sign up genius on the website and I encourage any of the teams or any of the groups of kids to do that and sign up that way. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great program. It's easy to sign up. You pick your area, you pick your streets, and the more we do that ahead of time, the more time we'll have to be out there actually cleaning up. So um, thank you, Rick, for that. Uh, and I think basically, oh, and congratulations to, thank you to Sergeant Welch and the Police uh, Leadership Academy. Those kids were also great. That was a, that was a wonderful ceremony. And as I said at that meeting, it's all about community. It's a word we've heard a lot tonight. It's the Middletown community and it's, it's uh, leaders and, and sponsors and people who, who, all the sponsors for the Run for Downtown and, and for all the community events we do, they don't get enough credit. Thank you. Thank you. All the record soon. Um, at the risk of repeating anything, I will try not to. Just the Odyssey of the Mind team, those are my kids. They're all at Presidential Park. I see them every day. Um, I'm their Miss Katie. They put in a lot of time in this, lunches, recesses, after school, and obviously it paid off. They're amazing, brilliant little kids. We've got a whole school of them over there, and I'm just I'm really proud of them. So that was cool. Um, Little League opening day was a beautiful day. We had sunshine and a bunch of raised days of rain. And um, I love being Coach Katie and being around the kids, and it's a good time. Um, I don't think we speak enough about the amount of volunteerism in this community. Um, the members of the Little League board, the members of all of our sports um, that we run in town, they're all volunteers. No one's paid for this. These are parents taking their time out to have these opportunities for our kids, and it's amazing. Our parents are coaches. Um, our umpires are our kids, and it's a really cool thing that we do here, and I just I was at that park till 5 o'clock at night <laughs> on Saturday, and it all was amazing, and I just it's just another one of examples when we go out together as Middletown. We're from every walk of life and everywhere you can imagine, and we all have a really great time together, and it was a great day. That's it. Alman Johnson. Thank you. Uh, congrats to Odyssey of the Mind. Back in the day when my kids were of that age bracket, I briefly looked at the qualifications and the expectations for the coach, and I saw that it was way more than I could possibly do. So, yes, it is about the kids, but I think we also need to remember the coaches put in a tremendous amount of time as well um, to make it all happen, so I thank them as well. Um, I try to stick mostly to local when I have this opportunity but I find it difficult tonight. I think in the last few days, looking at the news, there's a saying that history repeats itself. And as we read about mass executions and filtration camps, I think the parallels to Nazi Germany are becoming increasingly difficult to ignore. So where's it gonna end? It's not clear. And I know there's a long, long uh, respected concept of separation of church and state but I would offer tonight, we should pray for Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman John Fassois. Yes, uh, good evening. First, I would like to thank Alderman Massey for conducting our fourth ward meeting this Friday. Saturday. Spiro and I had other attention. We had other things to do, so we couldn't attend the meeting. So he stepped right in and take care of business for us. And he was pretty proud, <laughs> you know, to, to, to uh, step in and, 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 and get involved even if it was only an hour, but you did the right thing. I appreciate that a lot because we, we definitely couldn't make it that day. And also, Commissioner, I got to say uh, uh, that one negative uh, feedback that we received from Hampshire, thank you for clearing that up because that the week prior, Sprower and I was in that area. We collected signatures. We must at least knock on 20 doors and all positive feedback. And I was shocked to hear that one person had an issue. And you and I canvassed that area. And that particular day, it was raining pretty hard. And the water was flowing with no issues. So I like to say, it can't make everyone happy. Thank you. Uh, also, kudos to the Odyssey of mine. Young ladies, they were great. Great job. Thank you. Alderman Tolman. Yeah, I'd like to uh, thank Alderman Massey for pitching in for us when we couldn't make it. Uh, I was uh, up in Albany for the weekend. Uh, I'd like to also reach, uh, offer my congratulations to Coach Nolan and, and Silva and the Art Odyssey of the Mind uh, State Championship team. Uh, 
and I wish them good luck in Worlds. It was such a, watching the video, such a great blend of talents. You could see some were dancing, some were singing, some were playing the orchestra. And I agree with the superintendent, there was an overall awesomeness of the group. And it was really nice to see, especially as a history teacher, and the difference that people can make, like individuals in the suffrage movement, and the pride that they had for Orange County and Middletown really put us on the map there. So, And all these events we've been seeing recently, whether it's the, the police program, the uh, Leadership Academy, I couldn't make the, the Little League thing, but the uh, parade, but I wish I could, and the uh, it's obviously mine. There's so many talented students and, and children in our, in our city, and it's great to see them shine. Uh, especially an all-female team. Uh, also, uh, the person that spoke before that called in, you know, uh, Jude and I handle probably over 100 constituent concerns a year. We're, each week we're probably handling one or two. We work with a team with the, the mayor, uh, the council president, the department heads to try to solve as many problems as we can, get questions answered. We might not always have the, the answer that you want, but we do work our hardest to get you uh, to try to solve a pro the problems that we that you bring to us we are available you can reach out to us on the website we do have a constituents meeting on saturday mornings the first saturday of each month at 10 a.m you just got to make sure you're here by 10 because when we come upstairs the door locks behind us uh and so and it doesn't matter whether you're republican democrat we help everybody and we're you're here to serve you guys and so and we try to uh, do our best with the city so please if you have an issue or concern please reach out to us our phone numbers and emails are on the website, and we handle everything from up near uh, High Barney Road all the way down to East Main Street. So thank you. Thank you. New business. Good evening. We have a resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey authorizing a DASNY grant application to purchase a simulator for the Middletown Police Department. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. John Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. Massey? Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> a resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt authorizing a retirement of the canine heiress from the Middletown Police Department. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, second by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Motion carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green authorizing, excuse me, adopting a credit card policy for the city of Middletown. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, seconded by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Carries. A resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner authorizing the refunding of 2014 bonds. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, second by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Areas. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon approving the revised 2022 salary schedule for part time employees. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon, seconded by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson <coughs> authorizing. Three agreements with Troy and Banks for audits. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Motion carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois, authorizing a budget transfer in the amount of $4,465. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin, authorizing a budget transfer in the amount of $496. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin, seconded by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey authorizing the Run for Downtown Committee to host an event at Erie Way Park. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. 
Tobin. Aye. John Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt approving Z3 consultants as authorized City of Middletown electrical underwriters. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, seconded by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. <clears throat> A resolution sponsored by Alderman Green authorizing an agreement with Drapkin Strategies. A resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Audit. Mr. President, I move the accounts be audited, the claims be adjusted, and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for the payment. He's responsible for Massey, seconded by. Rick Consume. discussion. <laughs> Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Motion adjournment. So moved.